we go ahead and open with a prayer real quick. Uh, Supervisor Williams, if you would do that. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning with thanks in our heart. We thank you for all the goodness that you have uh, given to us. We pray, O oh Father, for our country. We pray, O oh Father, for those individuals who put their life in harm's way that we might have freedom at home. We pray, Father, for the citizens of, of, um, of, of the county that associated with the county lake. We pray for their safety and we pray, O oh Father, that you help us make decisions that will be beneficial, well, not only for them, but for all the residents of Octavio County. Uh, now, Father, we pray for these board members. We pray for them and, and, and their safety as they go in and out. We pray for their family as well. Father God, we thank you for everything. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, everybody. All right. Uh, hey, morning, Tess. We are waiting, I suppose, on the core and the DEQ to come to kind of give us an update on the on the lake situation. Uh, it's, it's pretty complicated in a, in a nutshell to say what we're looking at. Um, so, on that note, we're just going to have to wait till they get here um, to see what direction we as a board choose to go. Um, I guess to start it off, Supervisor Howard, you know, we're right now, everything that I'm hearing, what, what it's boiled down to is we need a hydraulic assessment done on that lake. Um, on that levy, and uh, I believe the DEQ will help us with that through their planning department. Um, there's a lady that's going to come this morning and kind of explain that, and kind of a timeline on that, which is a rough timeline. We're looking anywhere from four, five months, minimum four to six, minimum six months to get the money in place and. What, what what their primary mission was on this trip, they're not going to tell us what we need to do, what we don't need to do. Um, they went out yesterday and spent probably three hours out inspecting the, the dam and the situation and looking at the past history. And, and they'll, they'll talk about all of this, but what their primary mission was to assess the situation and now we've got to go further in, in assessing what we've got. But but they they're gonna have some answers today, but they're not that some answers they're, they're still not gonna to have today. But that's this is them coming in now, so they'll be able to sort of talk about where we're at and what we're doing. Good morning everyone. Do you know the do you know the status of the program? Not not yet. Not, not yet. Clyde and talking about Corps of Engineers, will they come to? Did that sound like anyone else coming? Clyde, Clyde coming? Sure. Yeah, I'm about to find out uh, after the meeting whether he's but but they got it's Clyde said. Clyde. that we probably need to go ahead and get so we'll have an assessment. Good morning. 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 Before you do the plan, I don't understand. Assessment, DQ assessment. Yeah. 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 Anyone else coming to Clyde? Yes. <coughs> the core? Yes. The gentleman? Yes. Dennis. 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 is coming. Do you all mind introducing yourselves individually, so so the people in the audience will know who we are, who, who you are, and who you represent? We can start with you. Okay. Uh, William McCurcher. I'm a chief of MDEQ Dam Safety Program. Okay. I'm Matt Tate. I'm the disaster program manager for the Mobile District Corps of Engineers, and you guys follow. You know, even though you're in Mississippi, you follow in our air responsibility for civil works. I'm 
Tanya Harrington. I'm a senior planner in Mobile District. Hey, I'm Mark Hayden. I'm a hydraulic engineer or H&H in the coastal engineering section of Mobile. I'm Justin Murphy. I'm the uh, operations manager on the Ten Tom Waterway for the Corps of Engineers. And Dennis is his on his way. And of course, you all know our engineer, uh, Mr. Pritchard, Clyde Pritchard. And our road manager is in, in attendance to Mr. Hal Baggett. He's, he's sitting there. I guess with that said, uh, Clyde, you want to, while we're waiting on Dennis to come up here, do you want to give a, an opening or an idea of what we're looking at or what yeah. we don't know? Okay. <clears throat> supervisor training before he can come back. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he'll go everywhere. <laughs> That's what I mean, he's a cure. Yeah, yeah. Up, up he's got some up there now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Italy is yeah. spreading faster than it did in China. Yeah, it's everywhere it's now. Uh, it's everywhere. But it's usually the old ones. There you yeah. go. Mr. Dennis, would you introduce yourself to, to everybody? Everybody else is already. I'm sorry. I'm Dennis Meckers. I'm the uh, Mobile District Corps of Engineers Dam Safety Program Manager. All right. For the, for the benefit of the room, just to tell you a little bit how we got to here, of course, we, we've been dealing with this thing for quite time but uh, subsequent to the slide uh, Mobile District Corps engineers reached out to us and said that they have uh, tools in their toolbox expertise in these things and offered to come up and meet and uh, share what they could with us about what their capabilities were and their thoughts about the County Lake Dam. Uh, in conjunction with that we've got Will McCurcher, who's the state's DEQ engineer, and during that time period also, he's reached back and looked at some of the historical records of the archives on the dam, and he was able to pull some additional information too that predates my involvement by quite a bit. So uh, that said, uh, we sent all the documents that we had to the core. Uh, they had an opportunity for a week or so ahead of time to review you know what we had on paper we discussed some of that yesterday uh, yesterday afternoon and then we took a field trip this entire uh, group went out walked the dam again uh, put a visual to some of the things that they were seeing on paper uh, they digested that somewhat and then they came back uh, and they have some comments for us today as to what they've seen uh, all this in an effort to do what we can as soon as we can to make a decision as to the degree of rehabilitation or reconstruction to take the proper mes measures with respect to uh, bringing this dam to a condition that's satisfactory to the EQ and <coughs> ensure the safety of the public. So with that, uh, I know Dennis has some, some thoughts Kind of rehash, maybe somebody just up. Certainly. And I'll, I'll step back. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Pritchard had sent us uh, some information uh, primarily from about 2016 time frame uh, to the present. I understand in 2016 there was a bit of a slide and uh, uh, we understand that there was a slide here in January. So he sent us some information from 2016 to the present. 
and uh, we had a look at that. We came out yesterday and met with him and our uh, colleagues from the NDEQ went out to the dam. Um, we had a look and we also had the benefit um, of uh, Ryan Reeves, the trip report for uh, Vicksburg Dam Safety Program Manager uh, who was out here on January 15, 2020 following the dam. So um, I thought I would share some of my uh, thoughts and observations um, based on my experience and my assessment of the information. One thing I will say is I've not performed any analyses towards this end. Uh, it's just based on um, you know, my experience and, and limited amount of information that's been made available to me. Um, one thing I do understand, though, is your, your dam is in need of rehabilitation, okay? Um, the upstream face is over-steepened. Uh, the riprap has been undersized. There's been some steepening of that face uh, due to wave action. Uh, we have a history of slides um, on, along the downstream dam, fa dam face and also uh, extensive slide in 2016 on the upstream dam face a number of repairs uh, due to those slides over the years. Uh, the spillway, as NDEQ has stated, is undersized related to the standard required for a dam of uh, this nature. This is a high hazard dam. High hazard being, meaning that uh, there's a potential uh, for some loss of life if the dam were to fail. The hazard classification is not a statement of condition statement of potential. It is a high hazard dam is treated uh, to higher standards accordingly. There are some issues with the shell. Uh, that is, the, the dam is composed of clay core material overlying it. The overlying material keeps sloughing. Okay, well-designed dam shouldn't do that. So there's something about that uh, material that's causing it to slough. We're not sure it's related to seepage from the pool, or if it's more related to direct rainfall, uh, softening the soil, loading it up, saturating it, causing it to slide. It's a question that's unknown, but it's of fundamental importance. Um, I'll just observe the NDEQ dam safety um, has defined the dam condition as unsatisfactory. Uh, prior to this January slide, and they've ordered the county uh, to submit a timeline and plan for making repairs. I think Mr. Pritchard has issued uh, a notice of need uh, to repair the dam, and uh, I, I tend to agree with both the, the order and the determination. There's some fundamental unknowns about the dam, uh, both due to the likelihood of, of a flood or water loading due to the inflow to the reservoir and uh, his performance uh, due to lack of knowledge of the engineering properties of the dam. So it's difficult to say much about the risk attendant to the dam uh, in, in its current state. I know that there's been some modifications to the outlet tower that have been proposed. Those need to be carefully considered. Uh, it's, it's, uh, capacity is one thing, but the receiving channel um, and its capacity to receive increased flow and velocity also needs to be considered. But it's shown to develop adverse scour issues downstream. Um, anyways, it's not a trivial undertaking. There's a, there seems to be, due to this repeated sloughing, a fundamental flaw uh, in the design of the embankment between the geometry and or the interaction of the core and the overlying material uh, that leads to this sloughing. Uh, the core, that is the, the impermeable, impermeable clay portion of the dam, seems to perform well over time. Uh, it's, 
seems to more be the case that the, the overlying material uh, has a problem slipping, whether it's due to the core geometry that's too steep on the side slopes or just maybe it's not quite the right type of soil uh, to be placed on the dam that matter is, is, is unknown, hasn't been analyzed. Uh, but there's a fundamental design issue there with the dam as evidenced by the repeated slipping um, on the dam faces both upstream and downstream uh, over the years. recommend that uh, the county procure the services of a, 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 a firm or entity experienced in the assessment, design, and evaluation of dams uh, towards rehabilitation and or uh, reconstruction of this dam. It's not trivial uh, design and uh, professional experience in dams is That's all I would have to say at this point. I'll be producing a trip report. Um, I submitted that to Mr. Pritchard here this week uh, with my findings and uh, recommendations. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh, can you speak a little bit about? In other words, the the core and you had mentioned that we needed to basically have that levy scanned in essence to see might it be just a spot or it could be the whole levy. Um, in other words, what you had talked about the seepage coming through. in an area or throughout the whole dam. It, it, we just don't know right now to the extent of the seepage. Is it in just, like you said, in a spot or is it permeating through the whole dam or the whole levee? Um, um, I, w I would defer to a geotechnical engineer to advise you on that. Uh, I'm a, my specialty is in hydraulics. Water, hydraulic structures, flowing water, rivers. Um, but um, an investigation of that type uh, would help to reveal uh, flaws, preferential full paths, perhaps underneath the dam that might uh, indicate um, uh, potential failure, failure pathway. And until we get that study, we really don't know the exact pathway that we need to take, be it the whole levee, the whole road, the whole levee as, as a whole, or if it is in spots. Um, so, Well, I'm not sure that, um, that the risk attendant to the dam in its current condition is not well defined, and it's not exclusively to lack of some subsurface feature or flaw. For example, water is the primary loading on a dam. It must be passed through the dam and exerts pressure on the dam. Uh, the, the inflow frequency to the pool has not to date been defined. The capacities of the spillway and the existing outlet works, the power and the conduit that's passed through the dam, have not been defined. The forensic investigation uh, which uh, includes whether or not the failures that we've seen are more related to direct rainfall or whether to a combination of that and seepage through the dam have not been performed. So uh, there, there's a number of factors outstanding which uh, suggest that, which <coughs> would inform risk but, that we can't really comment upon because the information uh, is lacking. 
it's not clear to me that seepage is the Law or concern of interest uh, at this point. I, I really don't know. What a little bit, a little bit more about what you talked about earlier was. You don't classify dams as safe or unsafe. You've got a formula that when you gather all your information and and you and you, and you analyze it, you come up with a determination as to whether the dam is tolerable, uh, of the potential of, of safety of the dam and the people that live, since it's a high hazard dam, whether that potential is tolerable or intolerable. And I think you mentioned that in your total findings to this point is you would have to classify the uh, potential danger as being intolerable. Is that, is that? Yes, we use, we use tolerable risk guidelines, and and uh, because safe and unsafe are, are, are uh, rather stark terms, um, uh, tolerable risk uh, is a combination of the likelihood of some failure occurring and the consequence of that thing occurring. I may have a dam that likely to fail, but if nobody is harmed as a result of that, uh, we would tend to defer to that risk uh, from a societal perspective as tolerable, and we may not throw a lot of resources at buying down the risk. So um, uh, we perform risk assessments for all our dams where we evaluate their features their design, their historic performance, uh, known flaws and issues, um, and attempt to, and, and also the consequences of those uh, flaws or deficiencies resulting in a breach, like how many lives might be lost downstream as a result of that, and also economics. And we use a combination of the likelihood of a breach occurring and the consequences to decide if the risk is tolerable. For example, I may have a dam, a uh, large dam upstream of the city that is in very good condition of what we believe to be a very low likelihood of failure. But if it were to fail, the consequences would be tremendous. So we would say, well, um, that, that risk from us is not tolerable. We're going to do certain things to buy down that risk. And we probably wouldn't do it on Structure and modification of things because, to the best of our knowledge, it's in condition. We would work on the consequences of such things, divide it here, set as flood warning times, notification systems, working with state and local agencies and preparedness and other measures. Now, a risk assessment has not been performed on this dam, either in the condition as it was before the slide or in its present condition. But Based on the information I have at hand, I believe that it's likely that uh, this, uh, we would consider the risk attendant to this dam, if it were in our inventory, to be uh, intolerable. That is, that we would um, implement measures to reduce the risk. And here, uh, would be both on the um, modification side of things likely to fail, and we would make sure that on the consequences end of things, that we're doing the right types of things to notify people that we have a well-defined floodplain, that, you know, how long it takes the water to get to certain communities, that the communities involved have emergency action plans and procedures to move people out of the way in the event of some flaws or breaches realized. Just to, to talk a little bit um, about, talk a little bit about with your planning department, the time frame of, of putting the plan together and actually getting the money to start into the the, the assessments right. and, and risk assessments and right. suggestions on, on what we will right. do. We said it would take a few months to get a, a scope and a cost agreement in place. Uh, 
uh, that would get the funds flowing for that, for that agreement. We'd have to determine who's going to do the work and how much it'll cost, and that would all go into that scope of work. Um, and, and to get that approved and through the system would take a few months. We um, would have to complete the agreements, everyone would have to sign, and then it has to go off to our division office. It wouldn't have to go as far as headquarters, but it does have to go to the division. Um, the program is limited in funds by state. It's five million per state per year is the maximum amount of uh, PAS to any given state, but then the division offices have some control over how much they'll allow uh, per study so that because they have limited funds for PAS studies, so so I don't um, I can't guarantee a certain amount of money that would come to it, but but there, there's a high limit, but it doesn't mean that you would get all that money for one study. They they want to spread it around, so it depends on on how much we ask for, and, and uh, but the turnaround is pretty quick. That's that's probably the fastest mechanism to funding that we have in the core. It's a 75-25 split. In other words, the government covers 75% of the cost and the locals cover 25% of the cost. Thanks so much. Um, Clyde or anyone else? Uh, well, from, from the DQ. Yeah. Here from yeah. William. Yeah. Yeah. Got uh, a lot of Certainly, I, I really don't have too much more to add to what we on with, with Dennis this year. Um, you know, uh, the risk posed by the dam um, in terms of the hazard classification, again, doesn't have anything to do with the integrity of the physical structure. It's all about the volume of water that's impounded. And if all that water was released um, during a breach, what are the impacts of that? So. That's why this dam has to be considered a, a high hazard dam. Could um, you elaborate on seepage? Uh, I heard you talk about seepage. This, the, but th this, this is not this open for public no, questioning. It's, it's just just yeah, information. Work that in. Um, but he'll he'll, he'll talk yeah, about it. So, uh, with the county going through, uh, of course, any repairs or replacement of the dam wouldn't go through and make this a low hazard dam, even if it was built brand new uh, uh, in, in perfect condition, uh, it would still be considered a high hazard dam. So um, at that point, you know, it, our, our focus would continue to be protection of downstream lives of property, um, making sure that we have the appropriate emergency action plans in place so that emergency responders and emergency personnel responding to any issues at the dam would have a plan or a procedure This time, you know, our, the deficiency that DEQ, the primary deficiency that's identified with the dam and has been known pretty much um, since at least 1979 when the Corps did their initial evaluation is that the spillways, which are the features that pass the water out of the dam, are undersized. Um, they they uh, weren't built to the original specifications um, and that in the capacity, set the dam up to where it doesn't pass the amount of water that it needs to. Um, and so that's certainly something that's got to be addressed. Um, we've spoken to some of the other studies that uh, can be done to look at the physical integrity of the dam, the remaining portion other than just the spillways and, and how those can be uh, evaluated. Uh, I think there's, there's some options through the board. So well, the county's got an opportunity to look at, at how they want to progress on doing some of those assessments. Um, so there's there's a, a several different routes and alternatives that, that could be available right now. Um, this comes down to timing uh, and how quickly we, uh, the county wants to have those completed. Um, so.
so with that, uh, the, the focus for the time being is going to continue to be keeping the wage level down to help uh, provide storage capacity in the lake as we continue to have these larger rainfall events um, as we move through the spring uh, to make sure that the, the dam has appropriate capacity to be able to absorb some of that flow that's going to come into, into the lake. That's all I have. this moment the course of action that we need to take is to have the like I said through the planning as a board we need to next meeting consider going through your department to do that study on the look at doing the study to ask for the money on the scan of the levy of the dam we all we know the spillway is too small we know Certain things, certain things we don't know about what's inside the core of that levy. Um, so there's a lot of unknowns as far as I mean, we're just assessing risks right now, and what I'm hearing is the main issue with the dam is, or with the levy in the lake is. The slope of the interior and the exterior ditches, um, the size of the spillway, and, and cutting off that riser, what it's going to do downstream. Um, the integrity of the material to, that's, that's, that's wrapping the core. Right. Uh, it's, so I mean, we've got a lot of moving parts on this. <coughs> that we just don't know until we get this study done through your department and we'll be glad to do that because that's the next course of action that we need to take. Um, beyond that, like I said, we're just assessing risks right now um, and doing everything we can to keep it down. Um, maybe maybe you want to let Clyde sort of wrap it up from, yeah. a, from an engineering standpoint as, sure. to what, um, as to what we need to do Yes. Yeah. assessment. So could we get the name again of the of the agency that's going to do the study? Your agency that's going to do the study. Well, we're talking about I think doing a planning assistance to state study through the core. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that the core would be doing the work. It could end up being an AE. We want to seek. Um, I, I first of all need to narrow down what the scope of this study would need to be and then determine whether we have the, the, the staff and the uh, ability to perform that work in-house or not. Um, whether we do it in-house or, or hire an AE, we can run the contracts and we can get the benefit of the federal uh, cost share for that project as long as we're, we're running the study. So it may not be the core itself that that does goes out in the field and does the work, um, but we could certainly um, look into getting that scope put together and, and figure out what we exactly need to do. But it would have to be enumerated, you know, ahead of time. Um, it would be on that document that you signed that cost share agreement and the, and the document that we have between us that would state who who would be doing that work. Do so you would have some communication with the geotechnical engineer. I know that Absolutely. it was mentioned that a geotechnical engineer. And we do have involved. geotechnical engineers. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I can, and I'm not saying anything here that we've not all pretty shared, but uh, once again, I appreciate core engineers, Will and their staff, for coming and helping us evaluate this problem. Um, um, don't disagree with any of your conclusions and our recommendations. And your observations very much appreciated. Um, for the board's benefit, there, there are options to obtain uh, what we'll call a 
scan right now from other entities. Will has shared some of that with me, which may come through. Uh, Will, correct me if I'm wrong, but from uh, Jackson State University and University of Mississippi. There, there are other ways to get that done, so this may or may not be the best or most efficient path for the core. Uh, my approach has been, uh, just, uh, based on my knowledge of the dam, shared this earlier, is that one way to eliminate all the unknowns is to take it down and rebuild it and build it right. And that's the estimate that I have in place right now. That would be refined as plans are developed and some of these things come to light as we do more investigation. But, you know, right now my recommendation to the county has been Take it down, rebuild it, do it correctly, bring it into compliance with the EQ, and move forward. Okay. And I, I, I think, really and truly, most of the mo most of the uh, things we've talked about has, has has sort of supported that theory too, because I think everybody's in agreement that's the only true way to know for sure what you got. Uh, and I just want people to understand that all of these scenarios we're talking about is a cost associated. That, that, that would be cost associated with this. That no path that we take would be free. No, no, uh, and, and trying to discover where we're at and what it is we, we've got to do. And then at the, at the end of, of, of all of that, the recommendation still might be tear down and rebuild it. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure we get all of that information out to the public. Uh, uh, again, as the engineer has said, thank you all so much for, for coming and sharing uh, and helping us through this situation uh, and try to try to get to the end end of it for, for the people. Yeah. And I mean, at this moment, that's that's all we do know is the risk associated with this. But until we know the, what the core looks like through a geo study, um, we're just guessing right now. That's what's going to be my next, the direction I would say that we need to go is, is going to be in that study. Um, nothing's going to change between what we're doing now and until we get the riser cut off. Uh, you know, people wonder, can you just cut the riser off? It's not that simple. I wish it were. I'm sure Supervisor Howard would wish it were, but it's just not. Um, that study is going to have to take place to tell us what course of action to go, you know, to take as a county. And like Supervisor Howard said, none of this is free, and quite honestly, none of this has been budgeted, you know, as the county is concerned. That's why I've reached out to the school district to see if anything that they can do to help. And uh, I've already gotten a phone call from one of the trustees. They want to see what they can do, but they want to know how this meeting comes out as well. So um, with that being said, uh, we're just going to have to wait until our next board meeting and then uh, get a scope of work with the planning department of the Corps to see uh, even who does that job that you're talking about and when the money will come down. But a, a rough estimate, four to six months um, to get the money and get the project or get that study completed to know our next course of action. So with that being said, has anybody got anything else to add to that? John, just one more comment. And Dennis and his staff pointed this out. I understand too that, that there is some risk associated with cutting cutting this ride wrong. And we're, we're, I think we pretty much made that decision to do that in, in an effort to keep the lake level down and minimize our risk. But uh, they appropriately, you know, brought out, there's risk associated with that and having continuous flow through that riser now pretty much. So we'll, we'll monitor that. And there may be actions in addition to cutting that riser that we have to do so far as the downstream impact. And, and and that's I'm glad you said something about the downstream impact. I, I know that during these last big rains that people even when we were pumping through there, 
people down that channel, you may as well say, said that it was still not all the way out of that channel. Um, that's not true. Well, that's uh, absolutely. I've got some video. It's completely out of the right. banks. Well, and I know Tibby has been out, but I've, you know, people, and, and hey, I'd be glad to look at that, but people were saying that it wasn't out. I asked Clay County, I talked with their supervisor, uh, R.B. Davis over there, um, asked him, you know, downstream is it affecting them, and he told me it was all clear. Um, because we do want to make sure that we don't flood out our neighbors, you know, Clay County. With that being said, I think we've done everything that we can do. So I say we adjourn until our March 16th meeting at 5.30. So we need a motion. So move. Motion by Thanks. Supervisor Howard. Second. Supervisor Williams, all in favor. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all so much.